very similar in age, and uh, you'll always be there in my mind, and we'll always be here for you. I just want to say thank you for sharing them with us, and you be proud of them, because we were, and we still are. He, we, carry with him, we carry him with us every day at work, and you carry him every day in your heart. God bless you. When I turn the TV on, I see it's the World Trade Center. I basically told my wife, I have to go to work. I, I think it's pretty much the same for everybody else. That The minute we saw it, we all knew we had to be here. It was all kind of the same thing. I was watching it on TV upstate when I saw the second plane hit. The first plane, when, when you saw it, I didn't see that hit. And I was just watching on the news, and you said, well, looks like there's a big fire there, and we're trying to figure it out. And you knew the guys were from one truck and from all the other trucks were going to be there working this fire. As I was standing there and I saw the other one hit, immediately it was just, you know, this is it, you know, we're going back to work. When the truck gets there, that becomes basically your command post. And usually the truck sh uh, chauffeur will kind of run with the sergeant, will run the job. When they get there, Brian is actually assigned to, I think he's assigned to uh, John Coghlan's team. Um, what we'll do is we'll gr do groups of one sergeant and between four and five cops will go in and that'll be your search teams. So when Dominic Mandelari gets down there, just by twist of fate, his team with Cliff Allen, Roger Mack, and Dave Norman, they just decide, oh, we'll go in the North Tower. John Coghlan and Rodney Gillis's team, they'll say, all right, we'll take the South Tower. Um, and they go in and they do searches. And it's just, um, you know, tw again, twist of fate that that tower goes first. Um, when that tower goes down, Kenny Winkler is able to, uh, then we kid him about it because Kenny sometimes had a tendency to mumble. And they said they knew things were bad when they were up there in the midst of it all, and they hear Kenny very clearly say that the tower is down, get out of the building. We basically linked up with uh, the other people that were already down there that morning. We regrouped, uh, what, north of uh, Chambers Street, and then uh, the bosses had a, had a meeting, and then uh, we were divided up again into teams and assigned uh, areas to search. You know, we knew we had people that were lost, hoping that they would be found sooner or later. But, uh, you know, through our tireless efforts, it was found that uh, there were going to be no uh, live recoveries. You know, it wasn't really towards the end of the day that, you know, that it really hit home that, you know, they're not at the hospitals, they're not. Uh, because, you know, as everybody knows, that first, those first few hours, there were, it was just utter, you know, and mass confusion where, you know. Very hard to find a landmark. Oh, absolutely. Down there too. I, like I guess many of the other guys, had thought there was a chance to make viable rescues here. There was a chance we were going to find some of our people, some of the civilians, some of the firemen, some of the Port Authority officers. And uh, I guess about the fourth or fifth day, though, we had seen, at least in my mind, uh, maybe some other guys picked up on it maybe a little earlier, but we just saw the compactness and the fire and the total devastation that it was kind of a reality so that it wasn't. Chances weren't good that anyone was going to come out of there.